North Carolina. This was probably UNC's best game of the year, in my opinion. And this has been a bit of a... This stretch of schedule for UNC has been a tough one. And I respect the fact that both UNC and Duke are scheduling these tough games right now, by the way. Early in the season. We've seen... In recent games, UNC play both UConn and Kentucky. Uh, so they've played a lot of nationally ranked teams. They played Tennessee already this season as well. But this one over Oklahoma, 81-69, who was previously undefeated, was probably their best game overall this year. And Carolina's defense last night was awesome. Here's Hubert Davis on the defense last night versus Oklahoma. I thought we were really good defensively, you know. One of the things that Oklahoma is, is great at is getting consistent points in the paint, whether it's post, penetration, offensive rebounds. So it was a huge emphasis on us uh, when they ran their action, which was mostly ball screens, to be, you know, protect the paint. And I thought that it, that is what allowed us to get some steals and deflections and create 18 turnovers. I just, I, I do. I think uh, the first half and overall, Defensively, I think that was our best effort of the season. I 100 agree with Hubert Davis on that one. Talk like like he said, 18 turnovers forced against uh, Oklahoma yesterday, and something that I know that Hubert Davis has talked about for his team, he feels their best when they're able to turn defense into offense and transition opportunities. We actually saw Carolina yesterday get fast 23 fast break points, 23 fast break points. And they got 24 points off of those 18 turnovers. So they were turning defense into offense. Harrison Ingram in the first half had four steals, multiple times leading to scoring opportunities. There was actually a stretch. Um, the team overall, by the way, Carolina had six blocks as well. When Carolina was up 34-24, Harrison Ingram as a weak side defender in the low post comes over, gets a block, ball goes out of bounds. Very next shot, Baycott gets a block. Carolina comes down with the ball, and it leads into a transition opportunity for Carolina. I think they end up getting fouled in transition. But that is something that Carolina was able to do yesterday, turn defense into offense. And I think that's what Carolina wants to do. They want to play with that tempo. They want to play with that speed. And by the way, offensively, four players for Carolina – Double-figure scoring led by R.J. Davis, who I thought was great yesterday. He had 23 points, five assists, zero turnovers for R.J. Davis yesterday. Hit five three-pointers. Here's Hubert Davis talking about his star senior point guard. I wouldn't say it's a chip on the shoulder. I would just say it's growth. I know it's hard because collegiate sports, specifically basketball, you, know, you forget about the guys that stay till their senior year. You know, it used to be that way. Just every year you matured, you got better. You talked about, he talked about, and his, his teammates about his leadership. That's something that is a big difference this year compared to other years. I mean, for him to step up in so many different ways, he's a, a, an outstanding defensive player. He's really stepped, up, stepped it up on that end. And not just the 23 points, but the five assists and zero turnovers. That's real. And so um, I'm just really happy for him. I feel like this is the first time that he is being celebrated, supported, encouraged, and noticed, and I love it. It's the he seventh time in his career he's had 20 and five, the first time he ever had no no turnovers with 20 points and five assists. Thanks, Kirsch. All right, so that's uh, Steve Kirshner, who actually you heard on the Adam Gold Show earlier this week from North Carolina, talking about 20 points, five assists for, uh, for R.J. Davis. First time he's done that without turning the ball over in his career. Uh, He's been absolutely outstanding. This was the seventh straight game where R.J. Davis has led Carolina in scoring. Seventh straight. But one of my concerns with Carolina going into the last few games is, all right, outside of Baycott, outside of Davis, outside of Harrison Ingram, are you getting the contributions from the supporting cast outside of those big three? And I thought the supporting cast was good for Carolina yesterday. Speaking of Ingram, Ingram was solid all around. 11 points, 7 rebounds, 4 steals, had the block that I mentioned. But he had a big shot late in the game as the shot clock was winding down. He had a, it was just inside the three-point line, takes a little bit of a runner off the glass and in that made it 75-67. If Oklahoma gets a stop there, they're only down 5, they get a bucket, you're down to a one-possession game. That was a big shot by Harrison Ingram late. But the supporting cast was good for Carolina when they needed it. 
Cormac Ryan followed up his 20-point game against Kentucky with 13 points last night. Wasn't his best shooting effort, but he had seven rebounds and was really good defensively as well. Seth Tremble had a big three-pointer uh, that made it 52-41 to 41 in the second half. It was a timely shot. He didn't really score a whole lot, but he made a timely shot when Carolina needed it to kind of stop a little bit of a run and to get back into a double-digit lead. Overall, like I said, Carolina forced 18 turnovers. This was arguably their best game so far this season. 81-69 over a previously unbeaten Oklahoma team. The top 10 win, It's a. I know it technically was a neutral site, but it was in Charlotte. It was a home game, let's be real. But it was a big win for Carolina that's put themselves a little bit through the grind uh, with playing a bunch of really good teams. And I said yesterday that we saw against UConn, we saw against Kentucky, that they were close, that they were right there. But right there obviously wasn't good enough because they weren't getting those wins. And yesterday they got that win and defensively was outstanding uh, yesterday for Carolina. Now the big question for for both Duke and for Carolina, okay, you got wins against top 10 teams. How do you follow it up? Keep it going. How do you follow it up? That's That's my big thing. Everyone is capable of having a moment and getting a big win or having a big game. How do you follow it up? That's the next thing.